fails. Everything else fails. I can go to the rock. I can go to the rock. When trouble around me. Thank you, choir, for ministering to us by the way of music. Amen. That rock is Jesus. Amen. When everything else fails, Amen. ought to be able to go to the rock. A choice of scripture, as we believe, Lord has guided us. Second Thessalonians, chapter two. Second Thessalonians, chapter two. As you're 
finding that passage. One of the things is happening in the world now, particularly in our country, is the mythology that Satan uses to twist minds up. Those of you who get chance to watch the impeachment proceedings dealing with President Donald Trump and having heard the testimonies of uh, people that have personal knowledge, credible people, people that have demonstrated that they believe and have lived in a righteous way. And with all of that evidence, it seemed as though Many people are not sure you see the mind is not only a terrible thing to waste but it's interchangeable with the soul it's a terrible thing to lose. All of the evidence. How is it that folk end up believing a lie? Yeah. Lie so much they're going to have a television show on his lies. This shows us the strength of our enemy, Satan, the adversary. I plan to preach uh, briefly verse 7 of 2 Thessalonians. Read, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. He who now letteth will let. Uh, that's not our subject, that's just a statement that the text is making. Our subject is the mystery of iniquity. The mystery of iniquity. What is iniquity? Iniquity is sin. It is sins of wickedness. Sins of wicked acts. Sins of gross injustices. Iniquity is sins that, that exist even when there is evidence that it is sin, but some think that that sin is right. They think that 
this wrong is right. It's a mystery of iniquity. Someone may wonder, how was it that Satan was able, after God had counsel to Adam and Eve? Come on, Pastor. Come on. Hmm. For them to fall in the garden. How was that possible? God said, I have made allowances for your welfare, for your health, for your keeping. All right. Every tree. Every tree. In the garden, except this one. You can freely eat. But now this one, mm -hmm. the day that you eat from it, ye shall surely, surely die. God shall take you out of here. And so on a particular day, Adam and Eve was near the forbidden tree, the forbidden fruit. And uh, their adversary, Snake, with a smile on his face, I would imagine, my imagination worked with me, appeared to be friendly rather than harmless rather than harmful. And he engaged them in careful dialogue. Adam and Eva did somebody tell you not to eat from this tree. Challenge their power of decision making. Uh -huh. And so they say, Yeah, God told us not to eat on this. They well, God uh, yeah, kind of tricked y'all a little bit. Look at that tree, it looked good. <laughs> Satan said, if you eat that fruit, it'll make you wise. And so Satan pumped them up slowly, and the appetite began to work with them. Saliva glands began to salivate. And they, uh, wanted to taste that forbidden fruit. And I would imagine that Satan said, well, now, uh, you got two hands. You can really do what you want to. And God probably ain't going to do nothing to you. Whatever happened, Adam and Eve did eat. And they fell from grace. And judgment from God came in that equation and stripped Adam of his easy toiling in the garden. Wow. Now he had to labor by the sweat and labor, hard labor, sweat from his brow. Eve was, was dealt with in the sense of having 
pain and childbirth. And spiritually, they died immediately. There was a wedge between them and God. In fact, they were trying to hide from God behind a fig tree. Nobody can hide from the omnipresence of God. The mystery of iniquity is how the adversary slowly work with those human beings to help them build a gradual appetite to commit sin. Saying slowly work with them and encourage them and tell them that it ain't wrong to do wrong. The mystery of iniquity. Well, right, sir. You know, after Satan had taken all of Job's wealth, mm -hmm. and Job had commitment with God. He said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. How is it that Satan can turn the clock back on a believing Christian? Christian that once had a hunger for the word of God but lost a hunger. All right. Christian that was dutiful to be on time at meetings and in church, but now it doesn't matter. A Christian who went out of their way to love others who may not have loved them, but now hate has taken the place Of my used to be love for others. Folk who couldn't wait to hear the word of God. People who wanted to study to learn so they could do. The mystery of iniquity is that the adversary will slowly walk someone down to the extent that we will begin to say, well, sin ain't that bad. We, we know sin tastes good, but it'll get you in hell. <laughs> and that's what we don't want to happen. Satan will begin to speak to our mind. It's all right. If you miss church when you get ready, you grow. It's all right not to pray till you have an emergency. It's all right not to bring your tithe to the Lord because the Lord got everything. All right, not to speak to Sister Jones because she has a mean spirit. It's all right to do my thing. God understands. Satan will slowly walk us down 
sin after sin, wrong after wrong, hatred after hatred, ungodliness after ungodliness. We begin to penetrate from our lives. The mystery of iniquity. Lead us no longer lead skeleton folk. Ain't gonna bother them. If they don't bother me, well, the Lord going to bother somebody. I'm going to mind my business. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take care of the Lord's business. I ain't going to let that preacher tell me what to do. That ain't too bad unless he's telling you what the Lord told him. <laughs> and then you may be saying, I ain't going to let the Lord tell me what to do. That's how Satan walked Adam and Eve down. They uh, didn't think it was bad. Come on, sir. Freestyle. Yes, sir. Amen. So they did. Eat. How is it? They've got all kind of doctrine now. I was telling somebody, uh, theology is commentary, it's not Bible. Bible is deep. You understand a lot of it, and a lot of it you don't. And the commentaries, they all right. I studied much commentary, but I know a distinction between uh, commentaries, theology, difference between that and the Bible. Some of the things in the Bible nobody knows an answer to. But here God is, is letting us see this mystery of iniquity. How did the devil work us completely away from God in a gradual sense? Uh, Satan start working, our faith start declining, our faithfulness start declining. Yes, Leaders don't lead with vigor and consistency. Leader ought to be able to stand up. If you got a title on your name, either you're hypocrite or you ought to stand up to the name of your title. I ain't gonna let Rev. Mackin tell me what to do. I don't blame you, I wouldn't either, but I'm gonna let God tell me what to do. I know I'm taking a risk, somebody may be mad, but I wanna do what God tells me to do. Decline in meaningful and qualitative worship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Folk come through the door, watch, watching. I uh, look like we're going to get out of here early today. Some folks sat through a whole service and never say amen. Sometime when I preach and try to make folks say amen, they look at me with an angry spirit. But I'm trying to help you. How can you walk in the Lord's house? Whatever you done last night, he woke you up and started you on your way and you walk through the door and cannot say amen. 
I'm trying to help you out. Walk through with a long face. Don't even know how long you're going to live. Don't know whether or not you're going to get sick before you lose, leave church. You don't know if you're going to lose your house. And walk in the Lord's house. It ain't got no praise in your heart, no amen in your mouth, no waving of a holy hand. Romans 1.28 said that God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Don't you know that God will fire with a whole lot of foolishness? You can live a lifetime thinking you're going to heaven like that rich man I talked about last week and end up in hell. God permitted them to have a reprobate mind. A mind whereby they are made sin their holy choice. Now, nobody can live without sinning, but there ought to be some guilt feeling when you sin. You ought not feel good about sinning. You slip up, you say, Lord, I'm sorry, and you get up. Second Thessalonians 2.11, for this reason, God sent them strong delusions Stuff in their mind was not the same stuff in the Bible. But the delusion was, uh, what's in my mind is all right, no matter what the Bible says. It's a mystery, like this thing with Donald Trump. Of all the evidence, that's still some folks, some of the senators that work with him, he fired them when they make him angry. He cusses on television. So he could kill somebody and it wouldn't bother him. Say, so he's the smartest military man in the world and ain't never been a Boy Scout. Uh-huh. They believe it. Uh-huh. The mystery of iniquity to the devil can and they keep working the public. Keep working the public. That's how the devil, the devil going to outlive everybody in here. Did you know that? Yes. Yes. Devil ain't. He going to be put in the abyss in Revelation 20 later on. Uh-huh. Amen. But he that is with us, that's who we have to worry about. Now, uh, this strong delusion what goes on in the mind there are a lot of preachers around now that they have changed the moral laws they think it's all right to be immoral And so they get that way before it happened. In fact, one preacher's on television out there in California. He said, yeah, I'm shacking up. Mercy, 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 mercy. 
And then he could bring a good gospel. But I wouldn't believe it. If you know the truth, truth will make you free. I'm almost through dealing with you all. All right. Now, how do we turn it around? How do we turn it around? How do we turn it around? It's on everybody's shoulder. How do you turn your situation, if you're in any of these situations or similar, how do you turn it around? What do you do in order to agree with him? Now, nothing is wrong uh, with the church here. Yeah, this is a blessed church. I'm talking about really blessed. Really blessed. A lot of sick folk get prayed for, they get up. Church is blessed. Yes, sir. Try to work and give, give a pay to the members of the church that do a good job. We ain't going to let the devil help us to help you to do a bad job. We're going to deal with you Amen. so you can do a good job for the Lord. Amen. Folk been prayed out of jail. Amen. Prayed to get apartments where they had got evicted. Prayed to get houses. Prayed to get cars. You mean the best we can do is to come in here late every Sunday morning? Yeah. Best we can do is to come in here and not say hallelujah and praise the Lord. It's the best that we can do to bring God those stained and rusty nickels and dimes that we have at home. What do I have to do? First, you got to want to do what's right. Say the devil get you so fixed in it that you ain't going to want to do right. You be figuring out all kind of ways to keep doing wrong. Well, if you're in that situation, you got to talk to him, got to pray to him, Lord, I done got ensnared, and I need you to come and loose me from the snare. And then once that the Lord looses, then there is repentance. Repentance means to be sorry for the wrong, but not just to be sorry for it, but got to turn from it and turn to Christ. Lord, here I am. I'm not much, but however you want to use me. That's what Isaiah said in chapter 6 of, of that, that, that great chapter in Isaiah. Lord, if you want somebody to go, here am I. Send me. Everybody can speak for themselves. Got to repent. If you, you first might have to do a lot of praying. For the Lord to get in that equation to give, give us the want to do what's right. This don't mean you're going to do right every day, but it means this want is that you're working on your life. The process of sanctification is taking place. You're getting better and better as the days go by. Nobody has perfected life, but everybody's life ought to be growing more in grace and in favor of the Lord. Amen. And repentance means to turn from it. 
And they turn to Christ. Turn from it. Turn to Christ. Well, who would know nobody but you? Turn from the sin. Turn to Christ. That's what repentance is. Now, once that you repent, to get ready to close out, you got to be 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You can't blame those services on the pastor didn't preach. Maybe you didn't say amen. You, you can't blame those singing on the choir. Maybe you should have said hallelujah or something. Then maybe you should be up there trying to help out. To be steadfast means to be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord that your labor in the Lord will not be in vain. Some folk got the Lord on the second string of the work area and first string on blessing them. Y'all didn't get that, did you? Yeah, some folk, well, if, if I get away, I will help out. If, 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 I, if I feel up to it, I would help out. When they go to the Lord in prayer, eyes running with water, eyes are red. Lord, give me all that I need right now. Got to be steadfast and unmoved. I would say with the choir, but they don't like me. Who cares whether they like you or not? You ain't living cause they like you or dislike you. We out here on his word. Be steadfast, unmovable, always, not sometimes, but always abounding in the work of the Lord. That your labor in the Lord will not be in vain. Anybody in here ever been blessed by the Lord? Let me see your hand. You ain't seen no blessings uh, yet until you remain steadfast. Devil don't like this kind of preaching. Oh, y'all, Rem Action didn't have to say all that show didn't, but I'm glad it did. <laughs> Steadfastness allows me to work with anybody. I don't care who you are. You don't have too much education that I can't work with you. You don't have too little that I cannot work with you. You're not too tall, too short, too big, too small. Too old, too young. When you're talking about being steadfast and unmovable, always, not sometimes, when it's favorable, when I'm getting my way, I want to abound, but to always abound. The work of the Lord that I'll labor in the Lord be not in vain. As I go to Calvary, who could look for a better example? Jesus was obedient even to the death on the cross. Come on, sir. Yeah. Talking about obedience. Luke 4, Pharisees tried to kill him and throw him off a mountain. Matthew 4. The devil tried to make him jump off of a cliff. In the last verse of John 8, they wanted to stone him right in front of the, city, uh, the temple. But the Bible says he was obedient even to death. The death of the cross. 
He was not going to Calvary for himself. But he was going for you, 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 and for me. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Paul recognized that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus had not committed no sin, so in order to die, he had to put our sins on him. I don't know about you, but when I look back, my own sins were so heavy, I didn't want to put them on me. Much less somebody else's sins, but he had the world's sins. All in his human members. He went to Calvary that he might atone, pay the redemption price, pay the wage of sin so the gift of God could be bestowed upon us. He beat him with whips and rods, called him everything but a child of the king. Disciples, those in whom he had helped more than anybody else, most of them other than John, followed him from afar off. He had told Pilate, if I need to, I can call a legion of angels and they would tear up this place. But it's to this end that I came into the world, that I would die for sinners of all type of sin, liars and backbiters, whores and whoremongers, killers and, and, and robbers, died for them all, died on Calvary, gave up the ghost on Calvary, he said it's finished, and he died, but early. On a Sunday morning, he got up, got up, got up, got up with all power in his hand. He needed some power to clean up my mess, and then when we put all of our messes together, he needed some power. As I close out, the mystery of iniquity is Satan slowly taking us to the mindset that certain sins are all right. He don't take it out quickly because he's going to outlive you. Slowly get us there and tell you. Now, if you get some good people in that group, then you can join. But you know what happened to that man last week. He didn't take care of his ministry, and he died. Yeah, the devil would tell you, well, you ain't able to do nothing but go to work and work eight hours. But two hours in the church is too much for you. The mystery of iniquity. The devil won't let nobody slide. He got billions, I would believe, of demons. Some at your place, wherever you go, my place, you get all in your car. Yeah, you get in your vehicle. I close out, I had a whole wheel to come off of my car. Satan spent the wheel off of my car, the whole wheel, while I was driving it. Can you believe that? Let us bow. Gracious, eternal, everlasting Father, we come before your throne of grace. 
to seek you in a very special way that you would help me to do whatever you deem that I need to do for my peace to be with thee, my labor to be implemented in my church home, and for my stand to be represented, representative of you. Pray now that you will bless my brothers and sisters, those who like me as well as those who may not like me. Bless our church in a special way. Bless all of our programs and bless all of our members. These blessings we ask for forgiveness of our sins in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The invitation is extended for membership at this time. The Bible message is whosoever will, let him come. Whosoever will, let him or her come. Whosoever will, come to Jesus. Let us all stand. Eternal Father, we thank thee for thy goodness, kindness, and tender mercies. Pray that thou will bless the refreshment that we're about to receive for the nourishment and strength of our bodies. Pray that you will bless the concert that's going to take place at four o'clock. Guide and utilize each singer according to your spiritual wisdom and great know-how. Now may the love of God, grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us till we meet again. Let us all sing together. Bless you, greet somebody and tell them you love them. And please. Bless a few things about our church. Go to the Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church. It is a church of common and concerned people where everybody is somebody. A church with a vision for ministry and religious education. And I do pray that the Word of God is as important to you as it is to us. For John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 teaches us that in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 14 of that same chapter speaks of Christ. It says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us.